here we are at Doctrinal Studies Bible Church from Birmingham, Alabama, and we welcome you today to be with us, as I said, uh, in uh, this video presentation of uh, Wednesday study. If you remember last, last week, we were studying the subject of Quench Not the Spirit from 1 Thessalonians 5.19 in a series called Let Not Your Hearts Be Troubled. Uh, as a result of last week's lesson on Quench Not the Spirit, uh, the Lord has led me to open a new series off from Let Not Your Hearts Be Troubled, a new series entitled Quench Not the Spirit. And I will include last week's lesson as well into my series on that. That would be lesson one. Now I'm into lesson two on this very series, Quench Not the Spirit, taken from Thess 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Last week, in quench, the word quench, we learned from last week the Greek word, uh, with sabenumai, sabenumai, is the word, it means to put out a fire, and it deals contextually with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So the idea of quench not the Spirit, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the idea of putting out the fire of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, of the indwelling Spirit. Now, last week, we introduced you to that whole concept and idea. And this week, we're going to work off from that. And last week, we saw, we introduced you to eight ways that you can quench the Holy Spirit. And this is why this is a new series. I thought I would just mention it, but it, the Lord said, no, let's teach it. So I'm, I'm all over that. Uh, last, last week we learned of quench not the spirit. That's in verse 18. Because what in, in, um, in verse 18. Because in Galatians, we went to Galatians 5, 16, 17. It says walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And we taught you last week that one of the ways you quench the spirit is by walking in the flesh. In Galatians 5, 16, walk, walk, Walk by the by means of the whole indwelling Holy Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The word flesh there is sin nature, out of that Romans five through eight passage of study, referring to a sin nature. And if the reason it's called flesh, it's part of the Adamic sin, part of the Adamic man and part of Adamic sin. That we have the flesh at birth, of course, it's used in a, in a human way to describe something else. When it says it, the flesh has its passions and desires, we know that it's connected with something inside. But the, it's called flesh or sin, flesh, sin nature. You get it at birth and you have it till death. E even though you're saved, you still have the... As long as you have flesh, you have a sin nature. That's my point. Uh, and so in the verse 16, it says, as there's a command, walk by means of the indwelling Holy Spirit. You will not. That's a promise. You will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Then he goes in in verse 17 and discusses an opposition between verse 16 and 17 in the idea, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And then he talks about these are in, these are this is an internal struggle in a Christian's life, walking in the spirit versus walking in the flesh. Now, when you walk in the flesh, walking in the flesh, the evidence of that is called carnality. The evidence of car when you walk in the flesh, First Corinthians three one through three. When you walk in the flesh, it produces personal sin. Personal sin produces. Carnality, just another word for walking in the flesh. The evidence of carnality is personal sin. It could be mental attitude type sins, sins of the tongue or overt sins. And so you have to confess your sins to get out of carnality, walking in the flesh, and back into spirituality, walking in the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Now, before we start our Bible study today, on our next lesson, which is going to come off from Galatians 5, 18 and 19, I just quoted uh, 16 and 17. 
the reason we walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, because if you walk in the flesh, you quench the Spirit. You quench the Spirit. You put out the fire of the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. So, so what we do before we study the Bible, because the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin. Walking in the flesh produces personal sin. James 1, 14 and 15. So, how do I get out of, the, how to get out of carnality and back into spirituality? I confess my sin. Christ, when he died on the cross, provided a way for us as believers when we walk in the flesh and evidence of his personal sin, carnality. We confess it and we get back to the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. First John 1, 9, confess your sin. He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. That cleansing is is not for salvation now, it's for the Christian life, for spirituality. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll get in our morning study. Let's pray. Remember, this is an opportunity for you as a believer priest to confess sin and privacy so the indwelling Holy Spirit can have the fire towards the word of God. He will teach it and recall it, John 14, 26. Father, we're thankful. For these that have come with us today at visiting with us at lunch on Wednesday at 1130. We'll try to hold this to an hour for them. They, they got to go back to work in their brown bagging or whatever they're doing for lunch. Uh, we're thankful for their attendance with us. And I pray the Holy Spirit would minister a lesson two on quench not the spirit. We'll learn another way you can quench the spirit. We'll learn it out of. Galatians 5, 18 and 19. Uh, encourage our hearts today, Father, with it, that the fire of the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit can be strong in our life and influence other people for Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, last week, we learned, as I said in my introduction, that one way you can quench the Spirit is by not walking in the Spirit, and the way you quench it is by walking in the flesh. This, this week, we're going to take another look. We're going to take a look at, and I came out of Galatians 5, 16, and 17, walk in the Spirit, not the flesh. I'm going to come to verse 18 today. So if you open your Bibles to Galatians with me, open Galatians up. Galatians, the fifth chapter of Galatians. And I'm going to look at, Remember, I read verse 6, 16 and 17 in my introduction. And so he says in verse 18, but, if, but if. Now, the word but is day, but it's in contrast. It's, it's in contrast. It's a conjunction of contrast in this passage. And the word if is a first-class condition, and it, which means this. If it's true in the Protestants, the if part of it, then it's true in the then part of it, the apotesis. There's always an if and a then in, in a conditional sentence. Now, here's what he says. Remember, if you walk in the Spirit, verse 16, 17, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Watch what he says in verse 18. If you walk in the Spirit in verse 16 and 17, and and that's the way you beat this inner struggle with flesh versus spirit in you. The flesh that is a passionate desire to do something other uh, apart from the Holy Spirit's ministry in your life. Watch verse 18. Walk in the Spirit. Watch what walk in the Spirit. Why it's important to walk in the Spirit. And the second thing he's going to do. And this is as important to not quench the Spirit. Now watch this. Verse 18. But if... You are led by the Spirit. This is the word ago. Led. It's a present passive indicative. The present tense, this is a standing idea. This, this, is con, a, this should be a constant or a consistent in your life. Walking in the Spirit will bring you to be led by the Spirit. You will be led by the Spirit. 
you, listen to the word be, you will be. In other words, the power of walking in the Spirit, the power of the Spirit will lead you. You will be led by the Spirit. Now watch, watch what Paul says, why that's important. Now he's writing the book of Galatians, which is law versus grace. The whole book of Galatians, the, the topic is law versus grace. A law work system is in opposition to a grace gift system. Now watch the second half of verse 18. Watch this now. If you are led by the Spirit, if this is true, then this is how you beat the second half. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. That's capital L. That's that work system. That's legalism. That's the mosaic law. It's the law system. The mosaic law system. The entire mosaic law system. If you are walking in spirit and being led by the spirit, being led, being led, being led by the spirit, which is a different idea than walking, and being led, you see, being led is about our choices. Being led in our choices. Being led in our choices. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Isn't that interesting? You are not under the law. You're not under the law. You're not under a legalistic system. You're, under, you're not under a, a law work wage system. You're under a grace gifted system. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that of yourself is a gift of God. That's the system you're under. You're under, you're under the Christ redemptive grace gift system. And that's a powerful idea. And the way you can quench the Spirit is to make a choice to put yourself back under the law as a way to be spiritual, to get the favor of God. If you're a believer, this is what, who he's talking to. That's who I'm talking to. You must never put yourself under a mosaic law. I don't care what, well, I don't care what, what it is about. I don't care if it's about a money system or a spiritual system. I don't care. If you walk in the Spirit, you will be led by the Spirit and you will not be under the law. Because if you're under the law, you're walking under the flesh system. Walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. If you stop walking in the Spirit, stop allowing to be led in your choices in the Spirit, you will place yourself, because you're walking in the flesh, under a legalistic system. I can't tell you how many people in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ have been born again by grace. Jesus died for their sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. They believe that. And are saved and then put their self. They, they, they stop walking in spirit, start walking in the flesh and put themselves under a fleshly system called the law or the legalistic system of thinking that this is the way you become a spiritual and gain favor with God by obeying the Mosaic law or rules and regulations of it. My, my, my. And they think they're, listen, they're religious, but they're not spiritual. The church of Jesus Christ is filled with people who are religious and not spiritual. Because they have not broken from the law. They've not been led away from the law. 
They've put their self back under it. That's the book of Galatians. My goodness, the whole book is devoted to that subject. That is the subject. What kind of church are you in? Do they teach you grace salvation and tell you that it's a work to keep it? Or when they get tough on money, do they take you to a mosaic tithing system and tell you that this is the way that you become a spiritual person? Listen, that's religion. It's not spirituality. This is what Paul is talking about in Galatians 5, 18. And then look at verse 19. I, I, listen, I'm just going to read the first half because it goes through 21. He says, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now watch what he says in verse 20, uh, verse 19, the first half of verse 19. Now the deeds of the flesh. You see, when you put yourself back under law, it's because you've been walking in the flesh and the deeds of the flesh. And you know what the deeds of the flesh are? They're in opposition to the law. There are 15 categories that are mentioned here in, in verse 19, 20, and 21. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, and drunkenness, grousing, and things like these. Things which I forewarned you about. I forewarned you again. Don't practice such things. They put themselves back under the law have not been able to keep the law. They've gotten into all kinds of addictive behavior because you, you're under a wrong system. This is the people in the church of Galatia. The Galileans. And so he says... But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You're not under a legalistic work wage system. This is a false system of spirituality or salvation in many cases. And then he says, now the deeds or the works of the flesh <laughs> are evident. I mean, here are these people trying to keep the law. Listen, James 2.10, you can't keep the law. You stumble in one little aspect of the law. You're guilty of all of it. James 2.10. My, my. So let me talk about four things. If you're still with me. <laughs> I know. A believer can quench the indwelling Holy Spirit by being led by the law into legalism. Can be led by the flesh into the law of legalism, not be able to keep it, which results in all kinds of misbehavior, spiritual misbehavior. You can't keep it. You can't keep it. If you keep one law, you've got to keep them all. If you violate one law, you violate them all. The law was never intended to save you. It was never intended to cause you to be spiritual. I'm talking about the whole Mosaic law. The whole kit and caboodle. Galatians, third chapter. I might as well go ahead and give it to you now because I've got you all bent out of shape. Verse 24, Galatians 3, 24. I'm in five. See, I've read the third chapter, whether you have or not. Therefore, the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ. Why? Because we can't keep it. It shows we're a sinner in need of salvation apart from the law and apart from ourselves. The law has made us religious, but it hasn't saved us. 
Its intent was to lead us to Christ for salvation. Therefore the law became our tutor to lead us to Christ that we may be justified by faith. And now that faith has come in Jesus Christ, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Law didn't die on a cross, was buried and raised from the dead, but it pointed to one who was, who was the Redeemer. And in the church age, the moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, chapter 9 through 11, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. In the fifth chapter, we always look at context, contents, the contents. And when you look at Galatians 5, if you have a study Bible, it will show you that you start in verse 13 and you go through 26. So I want to show you that in a nutshell. In verses 13 and 14, Paul issues a warning regarding spiritual freedom of grace. He opened the subject up in chapter 5, verse 1. Here's what he said. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. And he's talking about Mosaic law. He goes into circumcision and talks about it. Now he picks the subject back up in verse 13 when he says, For you were called to freedom, brethren, only do not turn your freedom into the opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. And he shows how the Mosaic law of Leviticus 19, 20, uh, uh, 19, 18, how the whole Mosaic law that points to Christ points to the love of God. He says, Jesus said all the entire Old Testament, all of the law is summed up in two ideas, two statements. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. And the second one is like it because they both deal with the word love. Love God with all of your heart. All that. You can't do that apart from the Holy Spirit. The natural man can't do that. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Only the spiritual man can do that. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. Well, the key word is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. And the list goes on. And so the writer warns us, what does Christ bring to me? He brings me freedom. In the walking in the Spirit is walking in, in God's freedom. His freedom, His grace system is a system of freedom, spiritual freedom. And so he gives us that warning. In verse 15, he issues another warning, a warning about walking in the flesh and not in the Spirit. Listen to what he says. But if you bite and devour one another, if that's true, this will be true. Take care, lest you be consumed by one another. Look, I've said this often. Somewhere a preacher gave me, gave, I heard it in a sermon sometime, somewhere or another, I don't know. He illustrated this by two snakes. One snake grabs the one snake by the tail in an attempt to swallow him. When he died, the other one curled back and got hit by the tail. And they both suffocated. It's kind of what the writer is saying here. If you bite and devour one another, take care lest you be consumed by one another. That's walking in the flesh. 
That's putting yourself under the law, putting yourself there by walking in the flesh, puts you under the law because you want to be in some kind of legalistic system. Maybe you're ascetic and it just works well for you to have rules and regulations, do's and don'ts. Or you may be lascivious and you need those because you're so lascivious that you, you have to have something. Listen, the freedom from that foolishness is in Christ. Salvation in Christ and spirituality through the ministry of the Holy Spirit that he gave to you. The first divine solution is walk by means of the Holy Spirit. It is power over the flesh. Point number two gives us the second. The second divine solution is to walk in the Spirit as, so as to be led by the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, you, you're not under the flesh. If you're walking in the Spirit, you want to be led by the Spirit so that you don't put yourself under law. That's one argument for Paul, for Paul. That's the argument of his book called Galatians. And what is being led by the Spirit is the choices. Listen, our life is built up of all kinds of choices every day. We can make choices based on our flesh, the, the lust patterns and the passion patterns of the flesh, worldly system of thinking, or by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that's going to point the Word of God. What's the Bible say? What's the Bible say? What's the Bible say? What's the Bible say? You're never going to hear that in the flesh. The flesh is going to say, what's the world say? What's the world say? What's the world say? What's the world say? I mean, we've seen a plenty of what the world says. We've seen it the last couple of days here in America as people riot in anarchy. A lot of them go to legalistic churches. You don't find grace people down there. They understand the idea of freedom. The second divine solution is walk in the Spirit. Listen to this now. So as to be led by the Spirit in the choices we make. What's the Bible say? Rather than what does your flesh say? What's the world say? What are your friends doing? Well, that's okay. Do it with them. No, no, no. What's the Bible say? You're a child of God. You're a sojourner down here. You're not a resident. You're not a resident of earth. Once you got born again, you're a resident of heaven. You're a sojourner now. Pilgrim's Progress, you remember? Being led by the Spirit, being led by the Spirit is the only divine alternative to the deeds of the flesh. You see, that's Romans, I mean, that's Galatians 5, 18 through 21. Yeah, well, you have to read that stuff. You know why? When you walk in the spirit, when you walk in the flesh, you get the deeds of the flesh. What you sow, you reap business. Out of James 6, out of James, um, well, anyhow, it's in the book of James. I pull that up and I'm, there it is. Book of James. I guess it's James. Either that or Galatians. Maybe it's Galatians. Let me just, while I'm here, let me look real quick to Galatians. Yeah, it's in Galatians. It's Galatians 6, 6 through 8. There it is. What you sow to the flesh, you know, you, you reap corruption in that business. Galatians 6, 6 through 8. Paul points out, Paul's pointing to walking by means of the indwelling Holy Spirit is being led by the Spirit in our choices. Listen to what he says in verse 24. He calls it, as crucifying the flesh with its passions and its desires. Not my will, but thy will be done. You know what the crucifixion is all about? Not my will, but thy will be done. Now, the prayer in Gethsemane with Jesus. Not my will, but thy will be done. 
It's about choices. What's the Bible say? What, does God, what is God's will for your life? You'll never find it if you keep quenching the spirit. He calls walking in the spirit so as to be led by the spirit. Paul refers to it as crucifying the flesh with his passions and his desires in verse 24. In verse 25, he calls it living by the means of the Holy Spirit. Living. Living by means of the Holy Spirit. I mean, most of you don't even... Look, you need to study the Bible more. You go like, well, I've heard about the Holy Spirit. How long have you been in church? Well, I've been, I've been a Christian since I was a little kid. How come you don't, listen, you don't put your head in the Word of God. Therefore, the Word of God's not in your head. I mean, what can I tell you? You're here with me today, and I'm thankful for it. You need to stay with me. Stay, at least stay a year with me. I'll put, I'll put the Word of God in your head, and you have something to think about. He also calls this, he calls it, if you walk in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, you are living, you are living, you are, you are living John 10.10, 10, the abundant life. You're living in the power structure of the divine system on earth as it is in heaven. Here's point three. Listen to Paul's words to how to live the Christian life. If you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. And then in verse 19, he talks about the deeds of the law, and he takes you through verse 21. In Galatians, the second chapter 4 and 9, he war warns of false teachers who, who, secretly, who, secret, who sneak in and secretly lie to you because they oppose grace, liberty. Galatians 2, 4, and 9. This was the whole discussion at the first church conference in Acts 15, verse 9 and 11. Verse, verse 5 and then 9 through 11. You see, the law, which is a work-wage system, you know, you work for wages, but you don't work for a gift. <laughs> well, who would work for a gift? You work for wages. The law is a work wage system which is in opposition to God's grace gift system in Christ. Romans 4, 4 and 5 talks about work wages. James 2, 10. Put yourself under law, you're doomed. You can't keep it. If you stumble in one little aspect, boom, out you go. James 2, 10 through 12. Or Galatians, the third chapter, 22 through 29, if you're interested. Listen to Romans 7, 6. But now we have been released from the law. <laughs> you know what released means? It, for Paul in Galatians, it means set free. We're in freedom, but don't give... Fr don't give your flesh an opportunity for sin. Why? Because you have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have been released from the law, having died to that by which we were once bound. When you got saved by grace, listen, the Mosaic law was dead. It died on a cross with Christ. It pointed you to Christ. And there, Christ released you from it. Why would you go back to any system? I don't care if it's financial or whatever it is. Why would you ever put yourself under the law? I'll tell you why. Because you're walking in the flesh. That's what the Bible tells you. I couldn't be more plain. I could not be more plain. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. But I couldn't be more plain than I am today. We have been released from the law, having died to that by which we were once bound, so that we serve in newness of the Spirit 
and not in the oldness of the letter. Romans 7, 6. Therefore the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith and put into a new system, a dynamic divine system where the Holy Spirit and the Word of God work under grace gift system. Let me close. Paul issues our final warning to advancing spiritually advancing believers in Galatians 5, 13 and 14. Listen to what he says. For you were called, brethren, for you were called to freedom, brethren, that's believers in Christ. Only do not turn, 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 your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. One of that would be to put yourself under the law. But through love, serve one another, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word in the statement of Leviticus 19.18. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. He said, you know what the key word in that statement is? What's the key word in that statement? God's love. The unbeliever don't get it. The law can't give it to you. The law cannot give it to you. Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God is shed abroad or poured out into your heart by the Holy Spirit. When you believe the gospel of Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead, and you're saved by grace through faith and not of yourself, is a gift of God. The gospel is the power of God to save those who believe it. I'm telling you the truth. Listen to Romans 6.14. For the sin, sin nature, shall not be master over you, for you are not under the law. You are under grace. I know. Now you're interested. Romans 6.14. Here's Romans 6.12. Therefore, do not let sin, nature, flesh, reign in your mortal body. Reign, be master over you, so that you obey its lust. you get that? That's our second lesson, and don't quench the Spirit. How can you quench the Spirit? You can be saved by grace through faith and not of yourself as a gift of God because you believe die Christ died for you, was buried, raised from the dead, third day. Have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and walk in the flesh and put yourself under a legalistic system. Both of those are the way you quench the spirit. How about that? How about that? You, you, you put out the fire that God has put in you in the person and work of the indwelling Holy Spirit. You're going to have to study these lessons more than one time to get them. And it's my prayer that you will study them with a desire to get them. Listen. Listen to me. Galatians 5, 1. It was for freedom that Christ sets you free. He released you from the bondage, not only of sin, but even of the law. Even of the law. I've given you passage after passage. Study the book of Galatians. The book. Father, we're so thankful today for these that have come our way and have stayed. 
We've challenged them to look at what the Bible says. We've challenged them. We're under a grace system. Put yourself under grace, not under law. When you put yourself under law, you've put yourself in flesh, and they quench the Holy Spirit. How in the world are we going to win a world to God through the gospel of Jesus Christ if we keep quenching the Spirit? We're at a time of a great awakening in America, even in the world with 168, 186 nations under COVID warnings for a spiritual awakening. What is God up to? To bring us to an awareness of him and why he sent his son into the world out of the, one of the greatest love gestures ever. So those who would believe would be saved from perishing to receive eternal life. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.